Get down here, young dragon. <laughs> we need your help. <laughs> See anything, Ignatus? No. I can't see where Cinder has gone. Just darkness. Wait, Cinder, darkness, aren't they the same thing? What's this? Something is coming into focus. This is peculiar. I see you at the base of a great tree, amidst a lake of mist and gloom. A tree? I've seen that tree, in my dreams. Only, they usually feel more like nightmares. Young dragon, you've been keeping secrets. What is it you see in these dreams of yours? I'm sorry, Ignitus. I thought they would go away, but they only get worse. Relax, Spyro. Think. I, I keep seeing... A mountain, draped in shadow. A face of stone beneath two moons. And darkness. The mountain of Malifor. Whoa! Am I the only one that thought that was weird? There was another. But it was more like I was seeing into the past and the future all at once. And there was a voice, calling himself the Chronicler. That's when I saw the tree. Impossible. Uh, yeah, no kidding. There isn't even a storm. The Chronicler? What? Don't encourage him. I don't believe it either. I've not heard that name in ages. Nor has anyone. Well, there is no way that Spyro could have known. This is fascinating. Well, who is the Chronicler? The Chronicler is an ancient dragon of immeasurable wisdom. Though I've only heard stories in fact, I've had my doubts as to the legitimacy of the tales. Yet now, I am left to wonder. As are we all. But if it is true, it is unsettling that the re-emergence of the Chronicler would coincide with an attack on the temple. Not to mention these other visions that Spyro is having. Yes, very. Tales of the Chronicler are often interwoven. Tales of doom. Oh, goody. I was afraid we might have to spend the rest of the night without any more doom. Just like me. We gotta get out of here. No! I, I can't leave her behind. I've got to save her. What? Save the beast that's been trying to kill us? Yeah, that wasn't her fault. She was being used by the Dark Master. Can go.
There is an ancient grove within the forest at the end of the Silver River. It is a secret place untouched by civilization. The waters there are poisonous as well as the creatures who are notified, but you shouldn't encounter any real danger. Trust your instincts. I shall be waiting for you here at the temple when your task is complete. What are we doing here? I'm not even sure what I'm supposed to be looking for. I think we're lost. Hey, have you tried these yet? Hmm, they're delish. Mmm, come on, try some. It's sparks, don't eat that. You don't even know what it is. <laughs> Nonsense, they're perfectly edible. All right, maggots. Time to spread out. Don't bother snaring anything smaller than a scurvy wing. Scab only wants prize fighters this time. And double the bounty for the one who captures Arboric. Hey, this isn't right. Ignitus said this place was uninhabited. But we must have taken a wrong turn. All those in favor of turning back? Hey, came from over there. Go see what it is. Oh, <coughs> not now. Uh, so, uh, how is everyone today? <laughs> Little bug isn't much bigger than a bug rat. Hey! Who are you calling a bug, you crazy-eyed, mangy, drool mutt? Uh-oh. Get him! Barney! I've seen this place before. It frightens me. This is an evil place, Spyro. It is called the Mountain of Malifor. Asylum to the wandering phantoms and lost spirits of those who had turned to darkness. But to the spirits themselves and the black-hearted, it goes by another name. The Well of Souls. Seen this hideous creature before. Why is he in my book? It was Gaul who led the raid on the temple the night of your birth when Ignitus rescued your egg. And when they took cinders? Yes. That was most unfortunate. Oh, and look, here is little Sparks. Hey, hey, hey. nobody needs to see that. Ever. Wait, can these books tell the future? In parts, though. Just glimpses of the future, really. Then I want to know what will happen to Cinder. Sparrow, you don't know- Please! I must know. <sighs> Very well. But hers is a darker tale. Spyro, you must understand, when she was taken by Gaul, she was poisoned and corrupted, made to do the Dark Master's bidding. Her entire life has been spent in shadow. She knows no other way. And when the Dark Master returns, she will concede. No one can resist the temptation. Not even the strongest among us. I don't believe that. Spyro, let me tell you another story. Ooh, ooh, ooh! Can I pick the story this time? <laughs> there was once a dragon, long ago, whose raw power was far greater than anyone had ever seen or could imagine. At first, he mastered fire, which was odd because he was not a fire dragon. 
Then came ice and wind and other abilities none thought possible. Is this story sounding familiar? It was a purple dragon, like me. The first purple dragon. In the beginning, he was encouraged, and secrets of elemental mastery were passed unto him willingly by the elders. But his power was limitless. It knew no boundary. He consumed everything. When he would not stop, he was cast into exile. And from his new fortress within the mountain, he built an armor, not of dragons, but of apes, and taught them to artificially harness the power of the gems, our life force. You're talking about the Dark Master? Yes. And in his dark seclusion, the sheer weight of his malice cracked the very foundation of the mountain, splitting the earth, creating a pit of despair where the lost souls of this world could reside. The Well of Souls. Created by the very beast who now seeks to escape it. is, what's that smell? <laughs> the purple well played. It's fitting that you should be here tonight, as we bear witness to the dawn of a new age, and the failure of your pathetic race of dragons. I wouldn't miss it, doll. Then please, have a treat. <laughs> Foolish dragon, you are no match. I've made it this far, haven't I? Yes, you have been quite elusive. Had I but known that all it would take would be your miserable amity for Cinder. What's amity? How tragic, really, that she should be the one to destroy you. Ah, the nightmare never ends. You don't need to do this, Cinder. Just like old times, huh, Spyro? Same as last time. Line me up with the staff. This isn't over. <clears throat> Don't touch him. The Webling is mine. Calm down, man. It's me. Uh, I can't. Spyro? What have I done? You're okay, Spyro. You're with friends. I'm sorry. I, I couldn't stop. Uh oh That's our only way out! Come on! Now's our chance! Just go. Get up, Spyro. We're not leaving without you. Usually, I would say ignore her. But she's making sense this time. Oh, no. We're trapped. Ride out this storm and live to fight another day. Get close to me! Now!
Young dragon, all our hope now lies with you. When you wake up, it will be a different world. But know this, you are not alone. You have allies. Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home. Sparks, must you do that? Well, maybe I do must I do that. And you know, it might be just crazy enough to work. Come on, Spyro. Put that sorrow behind you and clap your hands with me. Let the joy come pouring down. Rain on me. And you. Can't you feel it? Can't you just feel the love in the room tonight? Moliere! Sparrow? Is that really your friend? It's me. Where are we? Can you get us out? You are on Scat's ship. We've not been made to compete in the arena fights like the other prisoners. Not to a prisoner here, as are many of my kinsmen. But we move for prayer to make for worthwhile entertainment. So we are made to serve rock to the scavengers. Moliere, you have to get us out. Trust your living quarters if you like him. I don't know. My roommate could be more fun, though. I thought I told you to be quiet, fool! And you! Get ready to fight! It's hurting time, baby! I really, I mean more than really, hate those birds. Why are they going towards it? It is their calling. The black-hearted creatures of this world cannot resist its temptation. The well of souls beckons them as the night of eternal darkness approaches. What is the night of eternal darkness? It is the night when the celestial moons come together in a great eclipse. It shrouds our world in darkness. The well of souls is the pinnacle of its terrible shadow stirring the spirits of the deceased from their eternal rest and permitting them to roam freely within the halls of the mountain, if only for a short while. And soon, the night of eternal darkness will be upon us. Find me in the celestial caves of the White Isle. Both, Pally. Don't touch me! Can we at least order some room service? Sparks, we need to get out of here. Something terrible is going to happen. I know. If I don't get some food, I am gonna freak out. I got it! Why don't you shoot some sparkling magic out of your face and blow the gate up? Sparrow, you are in danger! I have a message for you from another prisoner. Here, take it. Yahoo! Fan mail! Dear friend, there are whispers going about the ship. Word of your captivity has traveled quickly. Many of the prisoners are uneasy. They say that the Ape King himself has placed a bounty on you, and all of the dragons. These are dark times, but know this, you have allies. I look forward to the day when we can meet. Hunter of Avalon. That was thoughtful. I particularly like the part about the dark times and the danger. It's showtime. Ah! I told you she was evil. <laughs> Look, my eyes twitching again. <laughs> yeah! 
Just like old times, huh, Spyro? Cinder, I'm not going to fight you. Relax. I'm just trying to put on a show for the crowd while we figure out what to do. Don't trust her. She wants to eat me. Well, what's happening? <laughs> I want out. I want out. Just like me. We 
gonna get out of here. No! I, I can't leave her behind. I've got to save her. What? Save the beast that's been trying to kill us? Yeah, that wasn't her fault. She was being used by the Dark Master. Now we can go.